Hello, everyone, and welcome to our podcast. I'm Danny, and today Crate.com talks with Donna Bolger, the Vice President of Clear Path for veteran, Veterans in New England. If you haven't heard of them yet, they work to build a safe, supportive, and respectful place for veterans to seek the help and resources they need in order to successfully integrate into their communities. Now, if you're new here to this podcast, before we begin, just pause it and press subscribe on YouTube or, or in your podcast app. Hi, Donna, and welcome. Thank you, Danielle, for having me here today. This is very exciting. Oh, it's our pleasure. I'm very interested in to talk about the subject. I got to say that we have some different cultures <laughs> and and that brings me a, a lot of curiosity uh, because, you know, I don't think that we have such... Um, broad moment for uh, talking about veterans and veterans' lives after service here in Brazil. So I think I'm always uh, learning a lot about how we can help people. And this case always, always bring me to, to this point of curiosity. So how did your story begin and how did you connect it with, with the organization? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so Clear Path for Veterans is a national organization. Um, the original Clear Path is located in Chittenango, New York. And uh, my husband and I have always been advocates for veterans. And we met some of the people from Clear Path on an outing. And um, we went to visit their location. And um, we walked through the front doors to a very welcoming place. And we knew immediately that there should be one of these veteran centers in every community across the country. And uh, we just made a commitment that day that we were going to do our part in New England. And so that's kind of how our story began. And we're following the great model set for us in New York. Wow, that's that's incredible. So you brought this to New England, right? Correct. And when did, you, did that happen? So in 2017 um, is when we officially started our 5013C nonprofit. And um, we've just been building incredible momentum since then. Wow. Yeah. And, and you mentioned that every uh, state or every city maybe should receive uh, a, an organization like that. So let's talk about the challenges or the greatest challenge that veterans face when they come home. Because I, I think I've said that before. Uh, we usually, or at least I usually, uh, connect the dots when I think of going to action or going to training, and I can imagine how hard that must be. I always fault in in, in looking at the, the coming back moment. So, what are those challenges? Right. So, um, you know, we take great pride in the United States and our military, and we provide a lot of training. And so, when someone enters the military, they go through extensive training and conditioning so that they can protect and defend our country. And when they get out, um, they are the result of some great experiences that they've had, but it's changed them. And when they return to their communities, um, the integration back into their communities is not always smooth because people in general, you know, less than 1% of our population serves the military. So there's not a great understanding of maybe some of the things that they've been through, some of the things that they've seen, and sort of the coming home challenges. Um, just reintegrating with friends and family can be a challenge for them. Well, I can I can imagine that. And when I was doing my research through your website, which is really incredible, I'm going to mention that later, uh, I saw that you have like a very interesting approach of thinking of not just the help that you do, but your whole team as a family. And I think that says a lot about the way that you tackle these issues, right? So could you expand a little bit more on that? Oh, oh definitely, yeah. So um, what we've done is really created a safe space. It's a community-based center. So we, you know, we don't want to exclude anybody from coming through the front door. I mean, it's as important to bring the community in as it is to bring the veterans in. And so we do a lot of activities around building that community. And you know, everyone's journey is different. And that's true whether you serve in the military or not. But um, we wanna create a space where you're allowed to explore what your path is in a safe place with supportive people. And um, a lot of our activities evolve around um, developing that camaraderie and trust so that um, if you trust a space in a community, 
um, you're more likely to get the help you need from it. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And uh, now just going to your website again, which is, by the way, clearpathne.org.org. Please check it out. You're going to have a link for this on the description of this episode as well. Uh, you're going to have a lot of information, but one of the things that really caught my eye was the myriad of programs that you have. <laughs> I really loved it. It's a really uh, broad approach to this. Could you highlight some of your favorite programs for us? Oh, so sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we do have robust programming, and that's because we're trying to provide something that anybody can try. And um, one of the cornerstones of what we do is we have a culinary program. So we have an industrial kitchen and we serve a community meal once a week meant for veterans and their families. And um, we started off serving 25 uh, people and we're up to 140 now. And that's once a week. And um, that coming together for a meal in addressing the issue of isolation by a non-intimidating way of just let's have a meal together has allowed us to discover some great need among the community and we're able to address it in, uh, in a safe and supportive way. And so that's like my favorite program. Um, Thursdays is the day we serve that meal and it's so busy at the building. Um, and at the end of the day, we're all really exhausted, but it's always been such a great day. Um, our focus is on wellness. So we have an awesome um, yoga studio and mindfulness studio where we do all kinds of programming. Uh, we do Tai Chi, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Uh, we do a fun program called Drums Alive, which is drumming on fitness balls. Um, we're starting a flute program. We have a lot of musicians, so we do a lot of music programs. Um, we have a beautiful library just for people to sit and reflect. Um, we do employment assistance. Um, so in some cases we have uh, veterans that might be homeless and they're just trying to get a fresh start and finding them a job is just one step in the process. So we're there to help them on you know, lifestyle change so that they can have a job um, and really start a new fresh life. Um, and we do a lot of family programming. We had a camp over the summertime and um, we had a camp out last night and um, we just love bringing the family in because they're absolutely part of the process and often overlooked when people develop programs and services. Um, and then of course we have our canine program where we train service dogs. And right now we have nine young puppies in training. So that's always a great space to come and visit. Wow, I, I told you guys there was a brother in me. <laughs> it's really something. <laughs> now, would you mind if I asked like, a couple of questions about some of my personal highlights because I, I've got to say that a few things really stood out to me, like the Warrior Reset program, not just for the name, but the whole idea of this and the brain retrain. Those two are really, really interesting. Yes. So the Warrior Reset is um, we put together activities that um, help veterans and their families explore maybe a new hobby. So we have a flag building workshop, which is done in a woodworking setting. And it's like our most popular workshop. We do it once a month. We do fishing trips. We do hiking. We do uh, mountain biking or biking. Um, really, we design activities around what we know the veterans are interested in. Um, so we'll be starting a walking group um, in, in some other activities um, that the veterans are helping us identify. And then the second one is the Brain Retrain, the NeuroFit program. So we have a, a combat veteran that is a neurologist, and he runs a program designed to help people with a traumatic brain injury. And, um, you know, we really believe that if you served in a combat area and you were anywhere near an explosion, you probably have some level of traumatic brain injury. And his program can help develop um, improvements in how your brain functions and really everyone can benefit from it. Wow, well, it sounds so interesting uh, and so helpful because I, I think that we are still trying to understand the consequences, right? Of going into action yeah. and the little things that might have affect soldiers in different ways. So 
first just getting out of the stigma of post-traumatic syndrome, then moving to understanding the physiology of it, it, it really must be very impactful. So thank you for that. Yeah, no, thank you. And I think the idea behind our whole facility and what we do is we try to integrate these things. So if you're in the program and you're interested in a service dog, well, you probably need some other services as well. And we want you to try all of our wellness activities because they can all help. Wow. And, yeah. And and taking a little bit of that, just to ask another thing, uh, if anyone that is listening to us or maybe someone that knows someone who is really in need of help, what is the best way to get in touch with you to get this help? So they can call us at 978-384-8800 or email us at info at clearpathne.org. Right. So we're going to add this information, guys, into our website as well. So it's easier for you to get in touch. And now another program that I was really interested to know about is the ETS sponsorship program. Sounds like something really interesting. Yeah. So it's a fairly new program. And what it's meant to do is um, it's early transition support. So anybody getting out of the military that's coming back to Massachusetts gets a referral to us so that 90 days before they get out of service, they know about us, which is half the battle. And then we connect them locally with services in their community. Wow, yeah, and, and I love when you say that it's half the battle. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> take your time, take your water. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. I'm gonna get your throat batting back in shape. <laughs> <clears throat> That's okay. No, no hush here. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and this this bit of it's half of the battle. It's also very <laughs> poignant to me because it it must be really hard for people to get back home and really reach out to help. Right? It's it it's hard already when you're just a civilian and we don't really know. Uh, which help is available to us and how to get in touch with people. So it's it's really important to have like a, a quicker uh, way to get in touch with you guys. So that's that's brilliant, honestly. That's a really good good idea. So I think it must be really hard for people to actually reach out to help. And you having like this bridge to connect them to the programs already is really brilliant. And it, it makes all sense. And I, I do think it, in the, pro the process of getting back to the community, right? Just coming home and feeling safe. It's, it must be really something. Absolutely. And connecting them with people that have had similar experiences. Yeah. And uh, you also mentioned something that really pops out to me that is homelessness, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I do you have an idea of how many veterans are in this situation in New England right now? Like, doesn't really yeah. need to be an exact number, but just so we have an idea. So um, I don't have those numbers off the top of my head, but it they um, veterans are homeless at a greater rate than the regular population. Um, so their problems right now in the COVID environment have been made worse. Oh, I get it. I, yes, which is which makes a lot of sense. The sad thing, but makes a lot of sense. And I'm sorry for asking such a specific question. I usually don't do that. It was just <laughs> no, something no, I was curious about. Um, that's fine. You know, we have um, staff members and we have board members who have been homeless veterans. And, you know, they've made it through very successfully. And I think it's so important to have them as role models so that people see that there's a lot of hope out there. Wow, absolutely. And thinking of this, do you have any, like, any story that you would like to share with us about the impacts that you have made so far? Wow. Um, it's so interesting because people ask me that a lot. And like every week I could, I could come up with a new um, like impact statement. Um, but we had uh, a gentleman come into the building and he really didn't know what he needed. Um, but he thought he'd check us out and he was homeless uh, he was about to be evicted and in a situation where he couldn't get a new um, apartment because of his situation, he had a family, he was looking for a job. And so he was sort of um, had a lot of stuff going on. 
we were able to help him get into housing, get a job. And he is so excited. He's very excited about giving back to us. Thank you for sharing this story. I always like to hear this. It helps us to fully see your day-to-day activities actually happening and, you know, transforming people's lives. So thank you so much. And in that sense, what is your vision for the future? Like for the future, not just for the organization, but, you know, the context that you're acting on. So, um, you know, we want to, focus um, a little bit more on the homeless population. We'll be adding some housing, um, but we are also focused on helping the national organization create this um, momentum to have more clear path facilities across the country. I got it. Yeah, I hope we get there. I'm really looking forward to see that happening. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And in that point, how is the best way or what is the best way for people to help you achieve that and keep going on? So, I mean, the most important thing people can do is if they know a veteran in need, refer them to us. Um, we have a lot of fundraising that goes on and obviously we need funds to keep our operations going, but we love volunteers and volunteering helps also spread the word and helps educate people on why this is so important. Well, absolutely. And again, do reach out to them through either uh, some of the information that Donna told us already, but also on their website. It's super easy to find not just information, but the ways to get in touch. So please go there. And Donna, thank you so much for joining us today. I loved talking to you and I learned a lot about what you guys are doing. Thank you, Danielle. And thank you for what you and your organization are doing. It's so important that we're all working together in this space. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and for everybody listening, also, thank you so much, as I always say, for sticking up with us and, you know, staying uh, until here, watching and or listening to our podcast today. And remember, if you enjoyed this episode, press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because that shows the algorithm that this is an important conversation. And then more people can learn about the importance of the clear path for veterans in New England. Bye and see you at the next episode.